Welcome, my name is Zach McElrath, and I'm going to show you how to create mobile apps with Squid. With Squid, you can create a killer user interface on any device. Now, Squid's going to be at Dreamforce um, throughout the next week. We're also going to be here throughout the hackathon. But if you're here for Dreamforce, we'll be in the dev zone, and you can visit squidify.com slash df14 to see our mini site, see everywhere that we'll be. So the first thing to do when building a mobile app with Squid is to get Squid installed into your developer edition Salesforce org. The easiest way to get Squid is to go to squidify.com slash install. This install form will give you an install link, which will let you install the Squid package into your Salesforce org. So once you have it installed, in the top right of your org, there's an app picker menu. From this menu, you can see an app called Squid. This is what you should click on. This should take you to our Squid Central page. And from there, you can click on our Pages tab. So we're going to show you how to build a mobile app with Squid and get it up and running within Salesforce One. For our scenario, we're going to build a mobile app for a sports equipment company. Our app will let users view available products for purchase and add products to a shopping cart. And the starting point for any app with Squid is to click Create New Page. We'll call our page App Home. We're going to say that this is going to be a mobile app. And we're going to start out with a template. Now, the template that we're going to use is object list or tab page. This will give us some basic scaffolding for our app. We'll use as a primary object that will show with the product object, which will start us out with a list view of the products in our org. Let's click create page, and this will get us set up and into the Squid Mobile Composer. Let's do a quick overview of what we're looking for and looking at here. In the leftmost side panel, we see the main navigation for the pieces of our app, starting with models. Models let us retrieve and modify any data object in our Salesforce org. You'll notice that our page template started us out with one model on the product object. Now there are two main aspects of models, fields and conditions. Fields let us choose which fields on our models object that we'd like to see and interact with in our app. We can choose some or all fields, but it's best to stick with just the fields we need for our app to minimize the amount of data we have to have transferred between client and server over the wire. We've already got the product's name field selected here and the created date. For now, let's just keep it at that. Now conditions let us choose which records to pull into our model. For instance, our company might want to sell lots of different families of products, but in our app here, we only want to show one or two families. Let's add a condition to just pull in products that are either in the sports equipment or sportswear product family. We'll click the plus button here and this will let us pick the field that our condition will be on. So it will be on the product family field. We'll click the checkbox here to select that. We'll say we're product family equals, but we could also say um, multiple specified values. And that's what we'll do here. We'll have two values. We'll have sports wear and sports equipment. So these are pick list values on this pick list field in our um, product family field that we want to have be equal to these values for them to show up in our app. Okay, we'll click save there. Now, the next piece of our mobile app that we can configure is headers and footers. Headers and footers are areas of the page that remain fixed in position, regardless of whether the user scrolls. Headers at the top and footers at the bottom. Our app starts out with a header, which we'll leave untouched for the moment as we build out the rest of our page. The third piece of our app is panels. Panels represent the different content areas or views that we want to show in our app. Squid Mobile allows you to find bindings to touch interactions that will show and hide different panels in response to user touch. Panels can be loaded into specific locations in the app. A main panel area, which will show your first panel when your app initially loads. And then a left panel area over in the side here, which allows you to have a fly out left navigation area that a user can toggle on and off. And finally, a pop up or overlay panel, allowing you to show details about a particular um, record in, that you're look, maybe looking at. So we'll show examples of these in our mobile app. Each panel can contain one or more components. If we click on a component, component here, we can select it and we'll view its properties over on the left. This is consistent for all components. We can click add components here to see the list of available components that we can add into our panel. Now our main panel starts out with just one component, a deck. And the deck, whose name refers to a physical deck of cards, 
lets us iterate over the records in a model and show a specific card for each record. Now, each card can contain fields, such as here we're showing the name and create a date field, as well as images, text, buttons, custom components, whatever you want, all relative to the specific item in the deck being shown. This deck is associated with our product model, but it could be a, we could have decks associated with any other models we create. Currently, our card contains these two fields, but we can add in whatever else we'd like as we go along. But let's just take a look at what our app looks like so far. Without having really added or changed much at all, we have a working app, once we click preview, that shows us a deck of the different products that are in the sports equipment or sportswear product families. So you'll notice we have jerseys here, um, and then we have some sports equipment. We have soccer ball, lacrosse stick, etc. Now, what we'd really like to see for our sports equipment app is images of our products. We'd really like to kind of move these detail fields out of the main, the main app screen into maybe a pop-up overlay view so that we could see them only when we want to, while keeping the user's focus on the product images in the main panel. Then we're going to take the product details and show them in a pop-up overlay that only appears when the user double taps or holds on a product's card. So let's go back into our page composer. To do this, we just double click up here on the header, and this will let us edit the page, or we can swipe down when we're, we can actually build these apps on mobile devices. Now, we don't want to pull down any unnecessary data into our app unless we actually need it. So let's create a separate model. This model will again be on the product object. We'll call it selected product. And we'll pick the object, say product. So this will let us request additional fields on a product record and not clutter up our app with unnecessary fields unless we actually need to see them. So we'll pick the product name, the product code, description, family, and the product's image so that we can show that image as well. Now, we'll add a condition to our model on the product ID field. Here we're going to introduce a new idea, the idea of filterable conditions. Filterable conditions can easily be added through Squid's point-and-click action framework or via the JavaScript API. What we're going to do is to define touch interactions on the cards in our deck, which grab the ID of the product record we're looking at, and use that ID to set the value of this condition. Then we're going to re-query our product model, which in effect asks Salesforce to go get more details about the one product we're interested in. Now, to do this, we first have to say that this condition is filterable default off, and we'll leave it at that. That will allow us to interact with this condition, throwing in a specific product's ID via the action framework or via the JavaScript API. Now, we're going to go edit some additional properties on the model because we don't want this model to load any data initially when we load the page. And that's, we'll discuss other advanced properties of models later, but that's all for now. Now we'll need to add a new panel to our page, which we'll call product detail. In this panel, we're going to add a deck that's linked to our selected product model. And here we'll add in the extra fields that we wanted to see on a particular product record. To add components to a deck card, we'll click Add Components, and then we can just double click to add them in. So let's double click three times to add three fields. And once we've got the fields added, we can go click on them to select a specific field we want to show. So we'll start out with Product Family, and then Product Code, and Product Description. We can reorder and move our fields around simply by clicking on the drag handles on the right. And we can remove them by clicking Remove over here if we wanted to get rid of them and add additional ones in. Now let's go back to our main panel. We want to remove all the data fields here. So we'll click Remove. And instead, just show an image for our product as the content of its cards. So let's click Add Components to add in an image. There we go. The image component allows us to show images from various sources, such as static image content hosted as static resources in Salesforce um, from an external URL if you need to, or here what we're going to do is from the body of a record attachment. So Salesforce allows you to store attachments to particular records, and those attachments can contain arbitrary data, such as a PDF, a JPEG, um, PowerPoint, whatever you want. Now Squid lets you easily um, add and create these related attachments and associate them using our file object. We have added a lookup field to the product object called product image that is a reference to this file object. So we're gonna choose the attachment field 
option here and go select that image. So we'll go into our uh, image field on our product and select the attachment ID field here. And then now that we have that picked, that should be able to show us a specific image related to this product record if it exists in our deck. Now we want to add a touch interaction to our card here. So we'll go to card interactions. We're going to make it so that when the user double taps on this card, so we'll pick from one of our available touch interactions, we could do double tap, swipe, pinch in, pinch out, whatever we want, we'll do double tap. What we want to happen is that when they touch this, that a pop-up overlay is going to be shown containing our product detail panel. Before we do that though, we need to add some actions so that we'll go ask Salesforce to request the particular product we're looking at, request more details. So we're going to use our action framework here. We have lots of different actions we can run, visual navigation actions that we'll use for um, showing a pop-up panel or for toggling a left panel, hiding a main panel, anything we want there. Um, and then we have model, model actions so that we can interact with conditions in our model, create new records in models, update field values, um, save models, and query models. Here we want to go influence our filterable condition, setting the value of the ID field condition to the ID of our current record we're looking at. So here we're going to use a little merge variable to specify the ID of the current record. Then we're going to add an action which will query our selected product model. And finally, we're going to add an action that shows a pop-up panel and we're going to show our product detail panel. Now we're going to say for our pop-up panel here, viewing product, and we can put in the product's name as a merge variable. Let's save and preview to see this in action. It looks like we didn't add the, the image field to our product model. Okay, so here we can see now a list of our products, but instead of seeing the detailed information, we're seeing uh, the actual images of our sportswear and sports equipment. And what we can do is if we double tap on a particular record, it'll bring up a detailed view of our product. Now you notice here we can see the product description and the product code, and we can both um, look at this data as well as edit it. So we could say this is a Jersey 201 here, we could save, and that record is actually, we've actually saved data into Salesforce, just like that. If we close here, we can go look at another one. Go look at the soccer ball, we could, add, could add, add a product code to that one as well. So the next thing we'd like to do is to add a shopping cart panel to our page to let users actually um, add items from this product list to a shopping cart. Let's go back to our page editor, and we'll go to our page panels list and add a new page panel. We'll call this one shopping cart, and we'll leave it in here for now until we go get a new model for our shopping cart items. Go back to models and call this one my cart items. This will be on our custom shopping cart object that we've added here in this org. Now the fields we want to interact with on this object are quantity, user, and the product's name and image. So we'll get the product, and then we'll also click the little button here to navigate into the related objects fields. So once we click this, we're now in the product object and we can select the product's image. We're gonna do this so that in our shopping cart, we can see a preview of the, the cart object's image. Okay, now we're using this one object, shopping cart item, to keep track of all the cart items for all users that are interacting with our app. So we need to add a condition here so that whenever whoever's viewing this page will only see the shopping cart items in their cart. So we'll add a condition on the, on the user field that we've created. Now we want to set this, the content of this condition, to be the, um, the user ID of whoever's viewing the page. So that's what we just did right there for the value. We also want to add some additional properties on our model. If we go into our models, click on our model here, we can see the advanced properties. These advanced properties let us do things such as set a limit on the number of records retrieved. So by default, only 20 are retrieved, but we could remove this to show 100 or however many shopping cart items we'd like to see. And we can also order um, using uh, SQL-like order syntax to say how we want these to come in. So if we want to show the newest records first, we can say create a date descending. All right, there we go. We've now reordered our model. Next, we're going to go back to our new panel we created, the shopping cart. And let's add a deck to this one as well to show the items in our My Cart Items model. 
So we'll add the deck, and it's now going to be associated on our My Car Items model. And in this deck, we want to show as the card title the product name. So we're going to use some merge syntax here to get the the ID or get the name of the product record and show it there. And for the card's body, we want to show the product image as well as the quantity. So let's add in to our components, let's add in the product image and a field to show the quantity. So we'll pick the field here, pick quantity. And then for the image, we're again using, going to use an attachment. So we'll go to the product and go into its image field and grab the attachment ID. So that's what we want to show. Okay, now that we have this extra panel, we're going to need a way to get to it. One way we could do this would be to have an add to cart button on the top of our page. Or to give us room to expand what we can do with our app, we can add a whole new panel to use as a left sidebar navigation area. That's what we'll do here. Let's create another navi a new navigation panel. Get this, call this navigation. And then to this, we'll add three things. First, we'll add an image that will be a logo for our app. And then we'll add two buttons. These buttons will have a product button and a cart button, which will, respectively, show our products panel and our cart panel. So let's start out by having the image. We'll go, we'll go show a static resource here. We have a resource um, called uh, Sports Logo. So we are going to just go pick that here, SK or uh, underscore Sports Logo. That should show the content of that static resource as our image. Then we're going to have the button here. We'll call this products. Give this an icon. So we can pick here from our icon picker from any icons in the Font Awesome icon set. So let's search for trophy for our products. And then for cart, this button will show our shopping cart. And we'll use a shopping cart icon. There we go. Now what we want these images, what these buttons to do is to, sh is to show other panels. So we'll go into the on tap icon actions for our buttons. We'll say set main panel to be our main panel, which was a list of products. And then for the shopping cart, we'll have it set main panel to be our shopping cart panel. Okay. Next, to give us a way to get into this navigation panel, we'll edit one of the buttons in our header, giving it an an interaction or an on tap action, which is going to let us, which is going to show that left sidebar navigation panel. So for the action, we're going to say not set main panel, but toggle left panel. And we're going to put the navigation panel into that left area. This will make it so that when we click this button up in our header, it'll toggle on and off that left fly out nav panel. If it's not visible yet, it'll be made visible. And if it is visible, um, this area will be hidden. Okay, so we just did a lot of stuff. Let's save and preview to check this out. Okay, so here we have our products, products list like before, but let's click this nav bar area. And here we go, we can see our sports company's logo off in the, up at the top. And then we have our two buttons. If we click on shopping cart, this will bring up a, a shopping cart area here, which will show a list of our cart items. And again, if we click products, this will bring us back to our products area. You know, finally, we want to have a way to add a product into our shopping cart. So let's go back to our composer. We'll add a button to our product detail overlay area that creates a new shopping cart item for the selected product. Before we do that, though, we'd really like to still see an image of our product from this, this overlay pop-up. But we're going to get in the area where we're having so much content, we're going to need to better organize it while still retaining the responsive behavior that we need for our mobile app. To do this, we'll add a responsive grid component to our deck. So we go down to Components, click to double click to add a responsive grid. Each grid can have one or more divisions in it, which you can think of like columns. Each division can be configured via the size property to take up one or more columns. And then we can define a maximum number of columns that can be shown before content has to wrap to the next line. So we'll add two divisions to our grid. The first grid will give it one size um, and we're going to have it contain our product image. And then the second division will have it take up two sizes so that it will contain the rest of our fields. 
So let's start adding components into these into these divisions. We'll start out, and we'll add in our product image here to this first one, and then we'll add a button allowing us to add this um, product into our cart. So first thing we'll do again is we'll configure our image to show up here. We're going to request this from uh, attachment. So we'll go into our product for image and select the attachment ID field. And then for our button, we'll click, we'll have this say add to cart. For the icon, we'll pick our cart icon again from, there we go. Now in this division, we're going to add in some detail fields about our, about our product. So we'll move these down here from our area up here just by clicking and dragging. Here we go. Now in order for these fields to be able to appear side by side with our product image, if we have enough space, we need to set the max number of columns to this grid to be um, three. So we can have a one third of it over here show the image, two thirds over here show the fields if we have enough room. If our page gets smaller, as we can simulate here by resizing our screen, then the columns will shrink and wrap down to the previous to, or to the next line. So that's the responsiveness of Squid's, Squid's grid component. Now let's specify what our add to cart button will actually do. Let's add an on tap action to it, which will create a new row in our cart model. We'll need to, we'll next need to save our shopping cart model so that our cart is saved to Salesforce. So we'll save and we'll select here our model for my cart items. And this is going to actually commit all of the new data and changes we've made into up to Salesforce. And finally, you may have noticed we can go modify our shopping cart panel as well to have this the responsive behavior we saw earlier. Right now, every deck every deck has a built-in grid that can have as many divisions in it as we'd like. So let's have up to four images be able to sh be shown in our shopping cart panel before we wrap down to the next line. At this point, we've got a pretty good working squid app. Let's preview and take a look at it. Here we go. We have our main panel for showing products. If we double double tap, we can see a detail of the product with our fields over here in the right, product image, and then we can click add to cart to actually add that in, add that to our cart. Here we go. Now, one of the great things about Squid is that you can very easily customize the styles of your apps and extend the functionality beyond what Squid can do by adding in custom JavaScript. So let's see an example of each of these. Going back into our product page, let's make a few CSS changes to make our app more in line with our corporate branding. To make CSS changes, we go to the resources area and click on CSS. Now we can have CSS be served from a separate file, typically a static resource in Salesforce. We can do that from the static resource area here or from a totally separate external um, URL. But we're just gonna write our, our CSS right in line here in our page, um, which makes it really easy for testing. So let's start out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna customize the header area of our page to have a black background color. So we'll have a class definition here, which we could find simply by inspecting the elements in our page, finding their class names, and then applying some CSS overrides here. We also want to go change the header um, to have a white background now that we're gonna have a black background. So we'll give it a color, a white, color white. We can change the font size, font family, whatever we wanna do, whatever your designers would like to do is possible with Squid to customize this, the styling. So let's pre save and preview to see what this looks like. So you notice now we have a black background for the header and it looks more in line with what our corporate branding is. Now the second thing that de developers often want to do, and then I'm sure you guys will want to do, is to add some custom components or JavaScript and using JavaScript and HTML that you know and love into your app. So what we'll do for our example is to add a store locator map using the Google Maps API. We've added a custom object to our to our org that keeps track of our store locations. And we've added geolocation longitude and latitude points for each store location. So what we'll do is we'll go into our products app and we can get this these store locations by adding a new model. 
we call this model stores and search for our store object. And then we'll request the store's name here, as well as the, the geolocation coordinates. This makes it so that through JavaScript and Squid's JavaScript API, we have access to the data in these records, and we can show them any way we want in any custom component. So for our example, we're going to be making a Google Maps widget. So we, what we will do is to load the Google Maps API as an external JavaScript resource. So first thing we'll go here is go to external, and we'll say Google Maps API. Now we're going to go, we're going to go pull up our, we're going to pull up our sample component here. We're going to copy over from an existing page our Maps API URL. There we go. Paste this in here. So go just get the Google Maps API, and now we're going to add a new inline component. So Squid allows you very easily to define custom components that can be dragged in to any portion of your, of your app. We'll call this component store locator. Now what you are given in a custom component area is a DOM element that you can add or remove things to. So here, if we just added this component to our page as it is, we'd spit out a little um, DOM element, a div, with its body being the text hello world with world being in bold. But we can go way beyond this. Let's go, up, go back and uh, pull over our store locator component we've created and show this in here instead. So let's briefly walk through this. What we're going to do is we're going to make our element take up the full width and height that's available to it. And we are then going to set up a little namespace so that we can keep track of um, maps that we, we're creating and keep them secure in namespace so that nobody has conflicts. The next thing we're going to do is probably the most important part. We're going to go get the data rows from our stores model. So the squid JavaScript API lets you do squid.model.getModel stores and then do dot get rows to actually get the records in, in the stores model. Next, we're going to create a, a div which will serve as our, our Google Map canvas. And we're going to append this element to our um, DOM element that we're given from squid. Finally, we're going to we're going to instantiate a new Google Map object. You guys can probably familiar with this sort of thing. And we're going to center it at our at a certain location. And then we're going to loop over all of our stores, which are just JavaScript objects. And each store record is going to have available on it a field that we have all the fields we've requested in our model, such as our geolocation field. And we're going to create a new marker in our map corresponding to that geolocation with its hover text being the name of the store. OK, so now that we've got we've defined this component, we are going to we're going to go place it actually in our page using the custom component. So if we go back to page panels and we go to our navigation panel, let's add a new a new button to let us get to this store locator panel. We'll call this store locator. Give it a little map marker icon. There we go. Now we just need to go create a panel for our store locator. And add in custom component. And here we just put in the name of the component that we've defined, store locator. All right, now we'll go back to our navigation panel and change what this button does when we tap on it. We'll have it set the main panel to be our store locator panel. Now there's one other thing we're going to do just for um, demonstrative purposes is we're going to run a squid JavaScript snippet after we're done setting the panel. Now this snippet is going to be called resize maps. And Squid's JavaScript snippets allow you to run all kinds of custom logic um, in various different points, points of the app. We let you just run snippets. And so you have full access to any data that Squid's requested. And the whole Squid JavaScript API can be accessed from these snippets. What we're going to do here is we're going to create this new snippet, resize maps. And the whole point of this snippet is just to kind of recenter our map. Um, on its original center every time that we come back to this panel. So let's paste this in. And there we go. Okay, so now let's go let's go test this to see how it goes. Here we are back in our products app. We now have our store locator button and we click on this. And there we go. We get a Google map 
and it has four data points on it um, near our current location here at Moscone West. So now the one last thing I'll show here is that you have full access to debug and test from the JavaScript console everything that you're working on. So if I do squid.model.map, we'll see a named list of all the models that we've requested in our app. Here's our stores model. Here's the data in it. Each store location and its geolocation, latitude and longitude are all exposed to you in JavaScript. So to make it super easy for you developers to build whatever amazing, awesome, custom um, things that you are hacking together today. So that's all. That's all we're going to show for building a mobile app of Squid. There's lots more that you can do. And we want to just want to thank you for listening. And if you have any further questions, just come by the Squid booth at the Hackathon to talk to Squid developers. We'll be available throughout the Hackathon to answer any questions you may have about Salesforce development and how you can use Squid to rapidly build out a killer user experience for your app.